Tis the season for clean balls, my friends. Fa la 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 la. Get on that manscape, my friends. I look amazing, specifically down there. When I pull down my pants and show my lady, she's like, wow, super clean. To get 20% off and free shipping with the code dudes at manscaped.com, that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code dudes. Manscaped for a perfect gift that will be the holiday's biggest hit. Dudes Behind the Foods listeners, have you heard of Masterclass? I highly recommend you check it out. This holiday, give the perfect gift of an annual Masterclass membership and get one free. Go to masterclass.com slash dudes today. That's masterclass.com slash dudes. Terms apply. Dudes Behind the Foods. Yo, it's the dudes behind the foods. Y'all, well, stupid David is gone again, uh, mm, but mm, this mm. time he was exposed. It's not his fault. Um, you know, we actually missed a week or two of podcasting because uh, I was sick, um, not COVID. What did you have? I had the motherfucking flu. Well, first of all, before we Old get into school, it's throwback shit. <laughs> uh, before we get into that, yo, today filling in for David So, my guy Patrick Cloud. If you ain't know, hilarious man, all Hello. deaf digital. Uh, and I like, and he has like mad podcasts too, his own shit. He does like nature shows now. Yeah, uh, I want to talk about that too because just come so. I, I think that's lit for you. Yes. Um, and I know just from. Like I was scrolling through my Instagram feed and I was mm-hmm. like, who should I come, should I bring on, who should I come on the podcast? <laughs> 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 who should I come on at 11 a.m.? <laughs> I was like, who, who would make sense to bring on? And I see you, you be posting about food and shit. Love it. Love it. Love Some it. people just don't like food. You know, I actually met a few of those people in my life. Yeah. And it's kind of just like, when you hear that, you're just like, I don't know how I, are yeah. we going to like keep hanging out? Like, yeah. it's so weird. It's just like some people are just not into it. They yeah. just kind of eat for the energy. Which is exactly. Like, who does that? Specifically, uh, a, a, a fellow locked up friend of mine, uh-huh. who, not in jail, but locks in his hair. That's, uh, I thought locked up first, <laughs> not in jail. <laughs> just in case people aren't seeing you. Uh, Emmanuel from Wild and Out, uh-huh. like first couple years... He would be like, he was talking about like the hype around Chipotle. Yeah. And he would always be like, it just tastes like food. It's just, I don't get the hype. It just tastes it like does. food. I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> but it does. <laughs> but, yeah, but it's great. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Just sidebar. I totally missed the wave on Chipotle because I had their, I went and had tacos there, which mm. is like, I don't know anybody who gets Chipotle tacos. you get the burrito, yeah. I got the tacos and I was like, what is the big deal? And for like two years, I didn't get it. And then <sighs> I had a burrito bowl and I was like. Oh, you went, you even skipped the burrito. You went straight to the burrito bowl. Oh, I went burrito and burrito bowl. Okay. I, I was a slut with it. Yeah, okay. I'm, I have never had a taco from Chipotle. Don't. It's I don't know. Yeah, who, who told you to do that? I mean, it was like, you know, it was a Mexican restaurant. I went in. I was like, tacos, right? And you're from California, though. L.A., yep. Yeah, so, so I, I mean, it's like, so why would, you, why would you even go there for your tacos? You got so many taco options out here. <sighs> you know, I that would be a good, that would be a whole segment in <laughs> itself. The fact, like. I was one of those people who was brought up on bl- the black taco. Oh, okay. So I learned that tacos didn't have lettuce as a grown man. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and like shredded cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Sour cream. <laughs> Every black person has the same experience at a fu- uh, their food at their first taco truck, and it's like, wh- where's the Why rest? Why is it so small? What? Yes. Okay. And where's the rest? <laughs> so I am not black. Um, <laughs> How many times have you said that on this show? <laughs> I, haven't said, I haven't said on this show, but I've said on multiple other shows. I, li- I like this. I like this. So, just so, to clarify, I'm not black. Uh, but I had a similar experience where, you know, growing up, my tacos were either cafeteria tacos or. What is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, like the hard shell tacos that okay. you would get from the store and then cafeteria, just like ground beef and lettuce and tomato and right, whatever. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, okay. Um, and then it would be, and then me and my family started going to this Mexican restaurant, which was more catered towards like white people. So they're big ass tacos, right? right. Um, the white Mexican restaurant. The white Mexican, yeah, you know, like the, what would people think of outside of the, unless you really know about the taco trucks, right? Right. And then when I moved to Paramount, California, 
which is majority Mexican. Really? Yeah. So Paramount is where I went to high school. I lived there since I was like probably 10. Okay. Um, and um, it's like 80% Mexican. My high school was majority Mexican. And um, I went to this little taco shop. It's one of my favorites right right by my family's Thai food restaurant. It was called Yiyo's Tacos. And that's when I first ordered like a taco platter. It was like four tacos. And of course, you're like, they're tiny. These are tiny. What the fuck is it? You think it's like a great deal when you look at the menu, like four tacos. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna have leftovers. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then you That's open funny. that foil, and you're like, huh? Mm-hmm. But then you realize, oh, oh, this is. It's all about the the meat. Yeah. We had all the other stuff, and they're just like, no, they have am- amazingly seasoned yeah. beef or 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 chicken or pork. And then they don't need that much. Yeah. Like I was just like, oh, you just put a pineapple on it? And then oh. you're just like, whoa. I know. And, and the <laughs> fresh tortillas and all that. I mean, eh, do you do you, do you ever fuck with the weirdest shit at the taco trucks? Like, I don't know, like the lengua. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> no, nah, I've never ventured. <laughs> never ventured. I do. I always do uh, uh, pollo, carne asada. And then when I'm feeling different, I'll do uh, el pastor. Okay. <laughs> you got to fuck with chorizo too, man. That's my shit. That's pork too, right? It is pork. Do you not? You're not a pork. Oh, well, you do. You, you just said you do the upper store, so. Yeah, I mean, every now and then, because I try to avoid pork. It's not mm. like a like a strict thing. I got you. Um, but I don't know. I feel like it's 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 about that time because you know I went to Alaska <laughs> this summer. Yeah. And I was I, I talked to a hunter. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and this was the first time it was uh like. Foreign meats, which is besides the basic like four to me, yeah, 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 uh, was broken down to me because I I hate stuff that's described as gamey, and it seems like mm. every every <laughs> other meat is like it's very gamey, it's very yeah, yeah. chewy, yeah. and he basically said that those other meats are difficult to cook and they're not supposed to be gamey. Every time you hear that, it's somebody who is cooking it improperly. Oh, I see. But there are certain things, like this guy was eating moose and stuff, and he said yeah. a lot of that stuff, if you cook it right, it's like fall off the bone. Oh. So I've only experienced like the, those other things in the worst ways. And I had like like goat the first time, it was like chewy. And oh, you weren't I, feeling I kind of swore it off. Word. But I feel like I'm, I, if I go to the right places. So I'm what did you have in Alaska? Um, I had I had Thai food. <laughs> Man, I thought you was going to say fucking whale blubber. <laughs> but let me, let me. The food was not great out there. We went to, we tried so many different spots. Oh, we did have some uh, fish and chips, and they use halibut for their fish okay. instead of cod. So that was really, really you know, good. You know why they do that? Why? For the halibut. Nice. Thank you. That's was that one, a freestyle? No, it's one of my OG faves. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> where's the script? <laughs> that was great. It's for the always halibut. a cue card right there. For the halibut. Uh, yeah. Um, um, okay, so. Tuna. Uh, so what did, the, did you eat anything that the fucking hunter was talking about? I was trying to, I was trying to think of a pun. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Um, oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, damn it. Sorry, You're killing sorry, me. Sorry. Yeah. It's, it's what I do. It's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's what I did. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, I, I went to the one uh, Thai restaurant out there, and it was run by this woman who was very Thai. Okay. She's very cool, very animated. Yeah, that's that's our, that's our people, yeah. But man, it was not good. <sighs> Ah, well, that's that makes me sad. It was, it was, yeah. It but was I'm, I'm sure depressing. all the like Alaskans are like, whoo, this is the best Thai food on the whole oh, state. Oh, we talked about <laughs> it. <laughs> it was just, it was probably fire, everybody. But it was just, yeah, it was like, uh, it was the first time I've ever seen like white pad Thai. So it was very under, uh, very under season. It was almost like that clear type of mm, rice. It didn't have that orange that it needed. It needed <laughs> the. It needs the orange, the Lari's orange, or that uh, <laughs> that that, that, pin, that pineapple curry yellow. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's that's where you go. Uh, would you like some tequila? Yes, friend. you've been uh, you've been uh, holding this very expensive looking bottle. Yeah, yeah. It was okay. So for those of y'all who don't know. Uh, you know, I normally will get the Classy Azul, the, the Reposado, the one that everyone gets, the famous one, the white with the blue accents on it, right? I had it the first time on, uh, on No Chaser. On No Chaser, yeah. Um, so this right here, I, I was going to get a regular bottle of Classy Azul, and I um, came across— You decided to ball out? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I originally was going to get it to um, celebrate uh, the, the Goody uh, collaboration event. And okay. I was going to sip it with the homies. Congrats. Thank you, thank you. And I saw this there. And it was it was definitely a, a pricier bottle, but I was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do it, right?" It's got the ring, got the bell on top. It does. Would you like to? Please. 
<sighs> Never going to touch this bottle again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. So this is the gold. Classy little gold. And um, it's nice. Is it like a mezcal? It's not a mezcal. It's... Okay. Um, it's it's it, it's more of a it's it tastes similar to the regular reposado, but mm -hmm. it, it is a um <sighs> shit. I probably should have remembered what I read on the box, but uh, it is this is a hundred percent pure agave. So I, as opposed to as a, I'm not sure, <laughs> but it's premium. It's premium. <laughs> uh, is what it says. So cheers. hundred percent. Cheers. Uh, Thanks for coming on. Stuff. I appreciate you, my guy. That is good. That is good. That is that's better than the what's the other thing called the azul? Uh, the this uh, it's all classy azul. The oh. the reposado is the regular one. Yeah. That's the the white and blue mm -hmm. one. Okay, that one is that one's cool. But this one is this is delicious. I agree. I feel like it hits a little harder and it's but it's still smooth. You know, it's very smooth. I never really believe people when they say it's smooth because <laughs> like there's a you know i don't want to diss any liquors on here but there's yeah. a lot of like famous people's liquors that you you try and you're just like <laughs> yeah smooth it yeah it tastes <laughs> like a cough yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i'm just but uh, i actually recently switched off of tequila mm. for that very reason i had to try this though mm -hmm. but i've been drinking rum recently oh okay i like the i like the rum vibe it's a, yeah the, the rum drunk has been very different lately and, and I, I feel like that's on brand for you right you know what i'm saying yeah people call me jack sparrow almost <laughs> all the time so i i've never connected that <laughs> it's been about two months of rum and i have never connected that so thank you i'll always get a little rum punch when i'm having like a if i find I'm at a jamaican spot that like you know that serves alcohol uh-huh do a little rum punch because that's what they would always serve me in um when i would go to like jamaican restaurants right but also i used to know this jamaican girl who brought me a bottle of like Jamaican rum, like from the actual, and that shit, woo, that shit hit like, cr like hard. The punch? No, not the rum punch. Just, just the straight, straight up rum. Oh, yeah, I was okay. like, oh god, it's that pirate juice. Yeah, 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 it was crazy. You know who else ran? Like, it, it, it's really crazy to say, but you know who else makes really good rum punch besides mm. Jamaicans? Random white women. Really? If you go to like a like a like a crab shack or just like a random place that's like seafoody. Mm -hmm. They will make the shit out of some rum punch. Interesting. It's and if you think about the whole like Bob Marley vibe thing too, okay. it's like that makes sense because there's like hella white dispensaries that are like no That's more about Bob Marley than most black people. I have such a story for you, <laughs> yes. my friend. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry, I, I tightened it. I tightened it. Uh, let, me keep it let me keep it loose, just in case that, that happens again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, uh, and if you've heard this story before I apologize you know how we do on this podcast we repeat ourselves a million times that's fine but uh, when I was still in college uh, I was in this art class and uh, there was this girl she was like a stoner you know what I'm saying but super artsy cool chick skater girl and it was Bob Marley's birthday mm -hmm. and it kind of randomly came up while we were at this table because we're doing like you know we're, it's an art class so we're in groups right okay this Asian girl Cindy I think her name was she's like you know what guys I just don't see the hype around Bob Marley. I don't get it. And so Stoner Girl, like you see her face. Oh. She's like, oh, okay, well then. And she reaches into her backpack. Oh, shut up. <laughs> pulls out the Life of Bob Marley book and was like, you should probably read this. <laughs> she had it. White girl had the fucking like story of Bob Marley. <laughs> big ass, thick ass book in her bag and was like, you should read this. And I was like, oh, shit. What do you think the chances are that she read that? <laughs> or she just had it? I think she was just part of her image. Yeah, like, like fucking LeBron just had the book and reads the first two pages. Yeah. <laughs> and LeBron with the, with the, with the tacos. <laughs> Have you seen LeBron's Taco Tuesday post? I didn't see anything about tacos. I have been seeing the book thing. Bro, LeBron, every once in a while, he'll post Taco Tuesday pictures. Right. And you know how you discussed your black people tacos, Absolutely. which is pretty much the, the non-Mexican taco if experience. If anyone's making black tacos, it's LeBron James. <laughs> as rich as this man is, dog, his Taco Tuesday tacos look like he went to fucking, you know, Rite Aid and got some tacos hit and, and was like, Let me guess. it's Taco Tuesday. Did he have the giant flower tacos? N uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Giant flower tacos, uh, Annie O, ground beef or turkey. <laughs> There's going to be probably some uh, uh, three cheese Mexican, sharp, the uh -huh. shredded the cheese. Yeah, yeah. 
and sour cream. That's the, that's and if it has that Lari's colored drip. Uh huh. If 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 that Lari's colored uh, grease drips. Oh, out Lari's there. grease. Oh, which is oh, I love that grease drip. Mm-hmm. It's, it's beautiful. I never called it drip. It sounded weird. <laughs> <laughs> if it has that style, <laughs> <laughs> if it has that Lari's grease drip, then it's it's a perfect black people taco. And they probably uh, cook the tortillas right there on the stove with no pan. Well, everybody does that. Oh, that's an everything. Okay. That's an everybody thing. Okay, like the, sure. the, the first homie to put me onto that is was a Mexican homie, because he was over at the crib and we were like, I was warming Legit. up some tortillas for like little make a little breakfast burrito, and he and I was getting a little pan ready and shit. He was like, No, 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 just throw it on, just poof, and threw it on. I was like, Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I would love to know your favorite food trucks in L.A. too. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like for the longest time it was what Leo's had the. I still go to Leo's. Okay. I still go to Leo's. Because he expanded. It's like three trucks over there now. Yeah. <laughs> it's barely a gas station. I, I, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just a taco truck, and then maybe you can get some gas on the side. And then there's that really sad taco truck across the street. I feel so bad for that. <laughs> it's like, move. Yeah. <laughs> what are y'all doing? Like, they just, they, they like being punished. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's like this uh, taco truck that has no line all the time, but unless, the only time they have a line is when the line is too big at Leo's. Yes. Okay. Oh, so to clarify, for not LA, folk uh there's a very pop-in food truck out here called leo's taco truck which is really good they have really bomb uh carne asada fries as well whoa never had that oh you gotta go it felt weird to get something else besides tacos i know but after you go get their tacos for so much you kind of start looking at the rest of the menu and they got these carne asada fries fire Mm -hmm. Uh, but then across the and across the way there's another food truck that's it's neon green. I don't even know what the name of it is, but it's right. always just there as well. A little taco truck. And mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, y'all just it's the stragglers. I, yeah, I guess. Yeah. People are like, ah, I don't feel like waiting for Leo's. It's like those, it's like those coffee shops that have the audacity to open near a Starbucks, like that David vs. Goliath thing. They're like, it'll work. Yeah. I, like, I'm <laughs> grassroots, man. <laughs> oh, I hate that. Screw, word. screw the establishment, <laughs> man. <laughs> grassroots. <laughs> <laughs> that just I know what type of person would say that. I like her song. <laughs> <laughs> I get. Oh, it's like it's. I guess it's a. It's since it's like a. Oh, never mind. It's more of a smoothie place. I was gonna say wheat grass roots. Oh God, <laughs> that's even worse. <laughs> no, grass roots is weirdly still worse. <laughs> um, all right. Um, so besides Leo's, yeah. Was I gonna say? Oh, okay. And then David put me onto a truck called uh, uh, Taco Siberia La Unica. Yes. Uh, which is a BD. Oh, you, you know about which that? Which one? The Burbank one or the East LA one? Um, there's Oh, so check this out. They just opened up one in Culver City, too. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. And, and um, it's like there's no there's never a line there. So it's like it's lit. Fire. And they just started doing BDA ramen, too, dog. Shut oh, up. It's popping. BDA for me was like a like DLC to the taco. Like within the last three years. Like uh-huh. I did not know about it until I think Netflix dropped some something mm. about it. And and that was the first place I went to. And this was like peak COVID. Oh God. <laughs> and it was so dope because there was a uh what was it? La Biria Unica. I've uh-huh. never said it out loud. Uh-huh. <laughs> Unica. <laughs> Unica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was one in East LA and mm-hmm. it was like right in front of like a 99 cent store. Yeah. And there was a a, a bartender who just lost his job. Okay. Who just st- like put up a table. And he was like mixing these like Mexican tequila drinks. Next to the truck? Next to the truck because there was these lines that you were in there for 20 minutes. So he basically was serving the line and he would give you like these pots to put your drink in that you can take home. I broke mine. I'm so, I was so mad. Wow. And then I went back uh, and he, and and asked about it. He was gone. And they're like, no, they got raided. Like, (laughs) please get his ass out of there immediately. They're like, he's been dead for 10 years. (laughs) <laughs> it flashes back to me talking to nobody like oh wow a pot <laughs> like that crazy guy with the locks man I, I don't never, know I never had the cup yeah I broke it <laughs> yeah. it never existed <laughs> just like going crazy <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I love beauty. I, I just found out about it, though. It got so popping, like, the past, like, I don't want to say a few years. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like you, you everything is beauty. I see beauty everywhere. Like, like, some people don't even do it. Have you been seeing those, like, taco spots that'll be, like, beauty, and you, like, order it, and they don't even have the dip? Ah, uh, really? Yeah. What are they doing? That's happened, like, a couple times. I think they think that, like, it's, like, how they make the meat. Oh. Right. But I need the dip. Oh, you need the dip. The dip. I've seen a fucking essential. uh pizza media. Uh, oh, right, right, yeah. right. Wait, I think I've seen that. Is you, that a? Have I had? That? I think I've had that. We're gonna it's like a specific place that does that. We're gonna think about it and we'll be right back after this break. Ten. 
Tis the season for clean balls. Fa la 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 la. Our friends at Manscaped are helping you clear your driveway for safe travels this holiday season. From stocking stuffers to white elephants, Manscaped's products are the top of every wish list. Grab some crop mops for your pops or the body buffer for the holiday lover. Win this year's white elephant's gift and help all the men in your life go from eggnog to nice hog. This December, by going to manscaped.com and using code dudes for 20% plus free shipping. And that's right, my friends. I love my man. Scape. Don't let their chestnuts roast in the wrong boxers. My friends get them a pair of manscaped boxers and also the shears 2.0 in their full kit for nail care with scissor clippers, tweezers and a file for the traveling man. You will not go walking around looking like a monster because if your dad has nose hairs, save his life with the weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer as well to get 20% off and free shipping with the code dudes at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code dudes manscaped for a perfect gift that will be the holiday's biggest gifts dudes behind the foods listeners if you haven't heard of masterclass what are you doing there is a plethora of knowledge out there and i know you're thinking well why take masterclass when i could just google things guess what they aren't master instructors and a lot of people have a lot of bullshit out there i love masterclass because it teaches me things and not okay not only does it teach me things right it has the instructors that i actually want to learn from and you know for me growing up I really didn't like school because I felt that a lot of the stuff that I was learning, I just didn't care about. But with Masterclass, you have so many skills that you could pick up from that you're actually interested in. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best artists, icons, and leaders anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn how to, I don't know, for me, for example, I've been taking this class called The Art of Negotiation with Chris Voss, which, you know, come on now, look at me. All right. I'm in business, baby. I need that stuff. Oh, and on top of that, too, because, you know, I love music. John Legend also teaches songwriting on this. So, you know, your boy has to get on that John Legend. Baby, since the day you came into my life. John Legend, baby. That's my man. So guess what, my friends? If you're not on Master's Class, what you waiting for? Stop going online and searching for random things to learn from that is all over the place. Find a focused course with a focused instructor that actually has the experience to teach you the right things. And that's why I use master class. I highly recommend you check it out this holiday. Give the perfect gift of an annual master class membership and get one free. Go to masterclass.com slash dude today. That's masterclass.com slash dudes. Terms apply. Yeah, man. Uh, so yeah, you gotta try the the fucking BDA ramen at Tacos y BDA La Unica because it's it's popping because their broth is already like so good, so you know. Good. Um, okay, well here's what's here's what's fun is um as I was asking Pat if he wanted to come on, uh, we started just talking about our just love of different like weird fast food and shit. Yes. And you asked me if I had ever tried the Mick Gang Bang. The Mick Gang Bang. And I said, and I was like, no, I've always wanted to try. And I mistakenly brought up that there's a filet fish involved. Right. And you were like, oh, that's not the McGangbang. Uh, well, explain what the McGangbang is for those who don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so the McGangbang is a, is a mistake that started in college. <laughs> uh, it's basically you get, because when I was in college, McDoubles with Mac sauce was the shit. Okay. Like adding yes. Big Mac sauce to McDoubles was like, and it was, it was cheap, but mm-hmm. it, was, it was like a, it was just a hack. So what people started doing is they started getting the McDouble with Mac sauce Mm -hmm. and the McChicken. The McChicken already has, like, some pretty good sauce, so you can get Mac sauce if you want. But you basically take the little uh, panty uh, panty (laughs) buns off, the bottoms. (laughs) Take the bottom buns off, and you smush them together. Mm -hmm. So now it's, like, bread, whatever's in the McDouble plus the Mac sauce, Mm -hmm. McChicken, bread. Yes. And I kid you not, it sounds... Horrifying. I know what I sound like right now. Not it's to like, me. It's like when you uh, explain the Luther burger. What's that? <laughs> the Luther with the glazed donuts as as buns. Oh, okay. When you explain that to people and people are just like, how are you alive? <laughs> <laughs> who's that Who's that named after? Martin Luther King Jr.? <laughs> I know you're kidding. I am. I, am. Okay. <laughs> I know you're kidding. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's Luther Vandross, by the way. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Luther Vandross, he was he had a he had a, a big point in his in his life, but 
It's so good. Like, I kid you not. I had the same reaction when I was told. And that first bite, everybody has the same expression. And it's just like, it's yo. A, oh. Yo. And then you hate yourself. <laughs> well, well, guess what? I... When we were talking about this, I knew there was something with a filet fish involved. And right. I fuck with a filet fish We've discussed the filet fish many times on this show because we love it so much. Both of you guys? Yes. Okay. We go hard for the filet fish It's been a while. Since you had one? I used to like them a lot, though. But okay. then I was just like, fast food fish? No. But here's the thing. They're also like one of the... Um, I, I feel like you, you gotta... As a lover of cafeteria food, hmm. I love uh, fish sticks. Do you? I do. I fuck with fish sticks. Fish sticks are pretty good. I, I I love me some fish sticks, dog. It's been a while. So it's like, for me, I realized that flail fish just taste like fish sticks. They do. Yeah. But the frozen ones are like good fish sticks. Same for me. Do you same, like the frozen same ones? Same difference for me. This, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do frozen fish sticks so a lot. So what, what I Googled and found is the land, air, and sea burger, which is... Big Mac, McChicken, <laughs> filet <laughs> fish right? <laughs> oh, shut up. And check this out. It's on the McDonald's website, dog. Oh, it's not on the menu, though? And it's not on the actual menu, but it says you can order it on the app. And I don't know if they'll make it for you, but, like, I think if you—if I read this correctly, you can order the Land, Air, and Sea on the McDonald's app, and I think they'll throw it together for you. But we but didn't if, do that. But if you do it in person, they won't do it? I don't think so. I didn't even try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There was already, the guy that took my order was a, a, a fan. He was talking my ear off. Uh, so oh, I, I, man. I, I wasn't trying to do too much. So here's your Big Mac. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, uh, some assembly required. Some assembly required. Okay. Yeah. So I'm hoping your hands are clean. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> uh, would you like some fries as well? Sure. McDonald's sure. fries? Come on. Oh, oh yes. Got okay. You. So there's your Big Mac. There is your filet fish I'm pretty sure the land, sea, and air burger was constructed just like this before it was made official. Right? Oh, yeah. Someone was just like, yo, what if we just put everything together? <laughs> you know and the saying? other guy was like, <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, the, oh, all, all that's missing is McRib. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Can't do the McRib anymore. I, I, I'm, what, what happened? What made you stop eating the McRib? When I really analyzed the fact that it's like, Wow, they molded the shape of bones in there, <laughs> which is weird because we don't we don't want a patty with bones in it, but they right. still did that. I was like, there's probably some human in there. Here's what I feel: I don't even care. You eat the, you like the McRib? I love. The really? McRib. I thoroughly enjoy the McRib. I also defend the McRib. It's like a hot dog. Um, it actually that's completely accurate. I'm just gonna comb my hair really quick. Because it's in my face. That's a cool ass uh, comb. What is that? I thought that was a uh, weapon. <laughs> I, my, it's my wife's. Uh, I just grabbed it from a drawer before I left the house. Yeah. Is the hook on top to hang it, or is that a hairstyle? Thing? To hang it. Oh okay. no, and to do a little. No, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> it's the little swoop. <laughs> <laughs> the manager swoop. Let me let me get a picture of this land, air, and sea real quick. Oh, but explain. Yes, you said McRib is like a hot dog. I think that's a really accurate uh, description. Yeah, I think that they just take the everything that people don't want about the pig, the, <laughs> the, the teeth, the face, the teeth, the little, the foreskin. you know what it is. I think that the McRib is the little curly tail. Oh, <laughs> it's just a bunch of curly tails mashed together. There's a restaurant in Long Beach where you can order just pigtails prepared like ribs, like the little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we disrespect this animal anymore? <laughs> 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 what do you mean? What do you eat it like curly fries? Uh, it, it kind of, kind of, they're just on you the just plate. Like, no, no, you eat it like it's a little fucking rib and you kind of just like pick at it, you know? Oh, so you leave what the, what the, is there a bone in tail? I'm not sure, I don't remember, it's been a while since I had it, but. She eat like oxtails? Oh, I love oxtail. So it's, it's kind of like a skinny ox. A oxen. skinny oxtail, I guess. It's so. The blackest <laughs> reference I could have gone to. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's a, like it's a skinny. I guess it's a skinny curly oxtail. That sounds really disturbing. Actually. Uh, yeah. I mean, now that I'm saying it out loud, yeah. All right, so here we go. It's looking like they they keep the middle bread of the Big Mac. I think that's on you if you want to do that or not. It's a lot of bread, right? a lot of carbs. But they got oh yeah. So they got they big chicken up top, Big Mac meat in the middle, a uh, filet fish. Big Mac, and then they end it with the Big Mac, all right? So, uh, mean, Big Mac is what? Three patties? A Big Mac is three patties. Way too many patties. Let me just say how barbaric this is. We are 
I think we, I, I'm first We're of all stacking three dead animals. I'm very, <laughs> <laughs> we have conquered everything. Uh, apologies once again to v, to vegan Robin Couch who is listening and watching. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this sounds disgusting to me. You said you're vegan. Yeah, yeah. I am. Oh yeah, this is this is a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, they they eat a lot of meat on this show, and I we consider do. myself a more relaxed vegan than the stereotype. <laughs> but this is six souls being consumed right now. You ever consider? Fish you ever, don't have souls. <laughs> I'd be thinking about. i be. What if like the stomach growl, like the oh. Uh, is the animal screaming is the out in pain? Is the souls in your stomach? <laughs> oh god! Yeah. You made that shit. No one's ever made it that real for me. <laughs> um, I put. I think about it like this. I, a lot I, of animals. I've said this multiple times. I feel like the more souls I consume, you the, say this a lot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the more powerful it makes me as a person. <laughs> It's like Shang Tsung. I'm like Shang Tsung. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm sucking the souls out. No pause. <laughs> and, and no pause. Play. <laughs> play that Fast shit. Fast forward. This ain't a video game. Um, and I, I just it makes me more powerful. You know. This is ins- this is really crazy. So how are you doing here? I so I have uh, uh, McChicken up top. Um, I'm all, I'm actually gonna take a picture of this because this is kind of like epic. Did you replace <laughs> the first patty? Um, yeah, I used, I just used the McChicken patty. So like this. Because it was like stuck to it already, you know what I'm saying? Got it, okay. And then, uh, I'm just gonna. And then you take the, you, you putting the, the fish on the bottom? Fish, fish on the bottom, I put the fish on top of the bottom Big Mac meat. So is chicken air? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just realized there's two land animals in I this. Think, I think chicken is air. <laughs> okay. Even though chickens don't fly, let me just get a picture and then, oh, oh are you ready to go? No, no, no. You can take, take take whatever you need. Okay, okay, okay. Damn, I should have kept this bun because it's saucy. Wow, I'm so, I'm like actually kind of really excited about this. This sandwich is really unsophisticated. <laughs> I hate it. There we go. I got, I got a pun in there. I hate it. <laughs> unsophisticated. I think she just did that because I couldn't think of one. Yeah. She, I, I think specifically she's... wanted to bring you down a couple <laughs> pegs. Stunt, you were flying a little too high. on me. I just got the stunt. Wow, this is crazy. Boom. All right, my guy. Are you ready for this? No. <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so excited that you're ready to, that you're down for this, dog. This is, I mean, this is probably the most barbaric thing I've did all year. Wow. You know, this is, it's kind of like a, a lion making a sandwich called like the black Mexican Asian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's the Asian? The flail fish? <laughs> No, just like oh, just a, 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 <laughs> like three a, types oh, of humans. <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> All right, and also I don't know if I can bite this big. Pause. Okay. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, I think you gotta just squish a bit. This this bite got two. Uh all the lips coming out. So I'm actually like I'm wow. This is this is crazy. I'm gonna take a picture too. I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> so if you saw this on a like a, a Yelp, you would uh, order this. <laughs> oh wow! This if is... it wasn't your own doing. Okay, I'm gonna I'm get it. I'm gonna get a little thing for the just TikTok and reels too. Wow, check it out, y'all! Land, air, and sea burger. That's a mm-hmm. McChicken, Big Mac, Filet Fish. Wow, all, all the food groups. <laughs> all the food groups is lit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm ready. You ready? Let's get it. Ooh, cheers! Okay. Cheers! All right. Mhm. I mean, I'll tell you what. Why do I taste each sandwich individually? And and it's not bad. It's not. You taste them all together. You taste them individually. They're coming together, and it's it's not wrong. It has <laughs> It's not wrong. <laughs> but I still feel like, I don't know. It's like three people singing at once, and you can hear each person. Uh, they're not necessarily harmonizing. <laughs> yeah, not a harmony. They're all singing the same note. Okay. But it sounds good. Um, I, yeah, I'm gonna take a, a just a, another bite just to make sure, just to understand what I'm feeling here. Hmm. Second bite was great. Well, that was good. You got tartar sauce on your nose. It was a big bite. <laughs> is there any? Uh, is there any napkin? Oh yeah, yeah, my bad. Here you go, dog. Thank you. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'm not gonna finish that, but I'm not mad. Um, I'm considering it. Mm-hmm. I'm considering finishing. finishing? 
just because it's like, and I, at this point, I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost thinking like maybe they have all, all three have similar sauces. Yeah. Look, it's a similar vibe, but they work. Mm-hmm. They work together. I feel like they're all just. It, they all have their own version of some type of mayonnaise. Mm-hmm. But if you have the McGang Bang, you already know that the the meat and the chicken work together. I like how there's like a McGang Bang within this. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a McGang Bang plus you know plus one. Yeah, land air. I, I mean, if you really think about it, you're getting all the nutrients <laughs> that you need. <laughs> <laughs> No. Breads. Lettuce. <laughs> so much protein. I don't think there's one nutrient. <laughs> <laughs> one nutrient in this sandwich. I'm gonna need more of this. You need I was just gonna say that. <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm not mad at all. Like, if it wasn't so disrespectful to my body, I would probably kill this. Well, that's what I'm saying too. Uh, I've actually been eating so healthy lately. Um, my Please s- tell me about this. My skin's been clearing up. Okay. I hired a fucking... Cause, okay, so I'm off cheese. I've been off cheese. I've been trying to be off cheese for years. What? Yeah, it, and it, it what hurts. What cheese do to you? It hurts. It makes me break out. Really? Yeah. So it's not like a stomach thing? No, no. Well, now, um, cheese used to... Like, dairy used to only make me gassy. I wouldn't, like, get the runs or anything like that. But after years of trying to avoid cheese... Yeah. Now having real cheese will kind of make me oh like, like I'm like oh shit it, this doesn't hit my body right right but it's the only food that I actually avoid is cheese which hurts my fucking soul dog. did you take like a a test or allergy test for this or you just noticed it was just one year I was going to a skin lady okay and I was trying so many things right and she was like did you ever try just not eating cheese? I was like, oh, and it was the one thing that I was Damn. waiting for. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, you ever try that? I was like, fuck. Did you low-key know? And then kind she of. just confirmed it? And then <laughs> I I tried, and then for sure I felt like an automatic correlation. You know what I'm saying? Like once I stopped really eating cheese, because I used to eat a lot of cheese. That's the thing too. I used to eat a lot of cheese. Like casually just at the house eating fucking like cheese sticks and shit, you know? like Cheese sticks? Like, yeah. Oh, like, like string cheese. Not, not, not just string cheese, but they used to have just like Wrapped up in a similar way, but it was just like little blocks of cheese that you could just eat. Oh, the sharp cheddar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I would just be eating cheese. Dog, I, I loved it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and once I, g- I stopped eating cheese, like I used to get these very thick, like, um, like on jawline, like pimples, like huge ones, like not even the kind you can pop. They would just like only on the jaw. Yeah, they would pop up like all right here. On Why my was jaw. cheese attack- attacking your jaw like it's, that? It's fucked up, man. So, uh, I finally just had to stop eating cheese and it cleared me up. So I've been off cheese. My skin's been clearing up. I hired a trainer. And like after I get like a good workout, I'll be like, yo, I'm about to eat right. You know what I'm saying? So that's the best part about working out is it like it makes your brain go like, all right, good decisions, good decisions. Because I did not just do all that shit for nothing. I know. Exactly. (laughs) And I've been doing so good like for the past like week and a half until today. But yeah, this your body's like the fuck, man. <laughs> oh, it's gonna it's gonna be so mad. I might I'll probably break out in like ten minutes. <laughs> like yo, zero to hundred. Well, I'm gonna go detox and we'll be right back. You know what, guys? Times are crazy, and sometimes you don't have time to cook. You don't feel like going out. Lord knows I do not feel like going out now that I got this baby and another one on the way. Lord knows I am so tired. You know. You ever pull into? Yeah. Do you ever pull into a driveway after a trip to the grocery store? Only realize you forgot that one key ingredient for dinner. Well, now you have options. Okay, get the groceries you need or a backup meal from your favorite local restaurant delivered with DoorDash. Okay, along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. You can get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. I mean, that's just lit. With DoorDash, you're not just getting the things you love, but supporting the community you love too. From the stores and restaurants and the dashers driving around each purchase provides a new opportunity for everyone involved because with DoorDash there's a neighborhood of good in every order for a limited time our listeners can get 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app and enter code DUDES that's 50% off 
up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code DUDES. Don't forget, one more time, that's code DUDES for 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Lovely dudes behind the foods listeners. This is your friendly neighbor, David So, here to talk to you about me, Undies, who we are sponsored by. Who doesn't love getting new undies for the holidays? Nobody, that's who. And if you don't like that, you're an idiot. Me Undies is your go to spot for snuggly, soft undies and more that all your loved ones will adore. Get merry and matching sets perfect for binge watching or holiday your way, however you like, with new limited edition prints. The holiday spirit just got real me undies and get 20% off. Off your first purchase plus free standard shipping and free returns when you go to meundies.com slash dudes my friends and let me tell you something my balls have been whispering to me late at night saying thank you so much for this soft of me undies oh it feels a fantastic and I'm like you're welcome balls now that you're nice and snuggled up riding those me undies and you look great with all these wonderful prints I'll tell you this you're gonna be impressing your lady aka my wife to get 20% off your first order free shipping and 100% satisfaction Satisfaction guaranteed. Go to meundies.com slash dudes. That's meundies.com slash dudes. Yeah, so I've been, and my, my body kind of takes well to working out. I just don't do it enough. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I've been trying to get right, especially now like with the child um, and another child coming. Like I just, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, man. I um, Do you know the gender yet? No, we're going to wait. Okay. Uh, we waited for the first one too. So okay, so no crazy gender reveal video. I I'm gonna do like a fake one. I wanted to do that yes. with the first baby, but I just I didn't I didn't have enough time. But I want to yes. do like a fake out, like make people think it's a gender reveal video. Uh huh. And either do here's what I've always wanted to do, and I've talked about this before, where <laughs> we pop the whatever you you expect it to be either pink or blue, and then it's green. And everyone's like, what the fuck does that mean? And then an alien bursts out of the pregnant belly oh and starts killing people at the gender reveal. That's so close to the... I don't want any kids, <laughs> but I thought that almost the same thing, but with demons. And oh, the, the, yeah. it would be black. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the Antichrist pops up and the, the lights go out. And All everyone's right. similar yeah. minds. Cheers. Hi. Cheers to, Cheers to <laughs> us. <laughs> uh, Ruining uh, baby showers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, so, you know trying to get right for these babies um trying to get my fucking endurance back because like now that she's almost two her energy is crazy she's running around everywhere and i'm like i'm exhausted so i hear terrible twos is like a a thing it's a thing and and it it starts way before two Oh, so they just said two because it rhymes. It right, like kind of rounds. Yeah, terrible two. <laughs> the alliteration. Terrible ones. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't it's work. Terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Energy's crazy. She starts getting a little attitude. She's throwing little tantrums here and there, you know. And you don't really, I don't really know what to do about the tantrums because, like, and I talked about this with David, but it's like, what do you do? The baby doesn't understand. You can't be like, hey. This is inappropriate. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, she just don't know what to do. She's just fuck. She wants to fucking run amok. And I can't, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to like be physical with her. You right. know, I'm like, and so I just, you kind of just have to kind of let them calm down somehow. Yeah. And, uh, and as a new parent, you know what I'm saying? I'm still trying to figure it out. Y- yeah. y- you feel me? But you know, it's, it's, a, it's you, fun. Do you think new parents work out so that they can literally keep up? Cardio wise with their kids or to mentally mm. deal with the, the the patients and the or both. It's physical. For so me. It, okay. So it is like some moments where you're just like, ugh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Literally, because like mentally, I feel great. I can play all day. Okay. Like, for me, and also like, you know how they say the funniest people are some of the saddest people? Yeah. Because they're always trying to make other people laugh. Right. That's not me. I'm happy as shit. It's so funny that you... <laughs> so, I was like, really? <laughs> I'm funny because I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is not accurate for me. I'm a happy ass dude. All right? Great. And so I love playing with my child. Yeah. But, oh, man, just like, you know, I'd be tired, bro. Like, even right. y- yesterday, it was me and Veda for the first time uh, in, in a while because, like... Uh, 
like Chia was getting her hair done. So she okay. and, and you know, and it's like an all day thing. You yeah, know? of course. Uh, I told this Asian mom, I took Veda to this little gym. I'm like, yeah. It's, she's like, where's mom today? I'm like, oh, mom's getting her hair done. So she's going to be gone all day. And Asian mom was kind of confused. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, my wash day. It's, <laughs> it's a lot, there's a lot going on. I don't want to get into it, but it's a lot she has to do, right? So I was with Veda all day. And I felt like by like three or four, we were mutually just over each other. Really? <laughs> like three or four? Yeah, bro. I mean, th- I mean, this was the day beginning at like six, seven a.m. You okay. Know? And so by three, and this is I'd already taken her to the gym. I'd taken her to like a, for a walk, and I thought she was gonna be tired by now. But she was like kind of like getting real antsy, and I'm like, I knew she was, and I was trying to play, but I felt like she was looking at me and was like, I'm over it, man. I didn't know that could happen with kids. Yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> She's just like... She just seemed bored with me. Where's mom? She, yes, where's mom? And she can verbalize that now. She like, said that? Not senses, but like uh, she'll, she'll be sitting there. She'll go, mama? Mama? And uh, look around. And I'm like, hurt? I just have to... Oh, well, look. Um, <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> Do you turn it up a little bit and try to be more fun? I, look, I was telling the homie the other day that like... I've never had to deal with rejection so much <laughs> as much as being a father because she because people are like she a little daddy's girl. I'm like, no, she's a mama's girl. And I hate it. It hurts my feelings. Because like she she is definitely more for her mom. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? So she'll be like, uh, you know, always calling for like, look, she'll get excited when I walk in the door after a long day. She'll give me a little smile. But when Chia comes in, bro, uh, she like perks up, runs you through be the door. Hating. Yes. <laughs> And, <laughs> and here, I'll be here all day. I, yeah. I had to learn. So I started lear- realizing why girls play games to get their dudes to pay more attention. Because when I was feeling neglected or whatever, what randomly Chia was like, hey, why don't you like fake cry real quick? See what Veda does, right? Pretend like you're sad. And I was like, okay, cool. So I was in the corner and I was like, I was like, oh my God, baby. <laughs> like, pretending I was sad and shit. She stopped, looked at me. Came over and gave me a big ass hug, laid on me, and I was like, "Oh, this is nice." <laughs> so you, <laughs> I was like, "This is." I see why girls this is are why they do that. I see why they <laughs> fake the tears. I see why they're manipulative because this is nice. <laughs> I've <laughs> I've never heard that perspective switch. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> I was like, "Is this why they fake the tears?" Oh, I get it. Damn, there's a lot you could extract from that. <laughs> oh, a lot a of lessons lot. in that. Yeah, like let's just let's ignore my insecurity <laughs> <laughs> and need and need for love, all right? And validation. I don't know if I could risk doing that and them not <laughs> coming oh. over if you started fake crying and they're just like, uh, daddy will figure it out. There's this fucking parent <laughs> challenge where you you both parents run opposite ways and see which way the kid uh, runs. I wouldn't even set myself up for that. Exactly. You didn't do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I show, I sh- <laughs> you feel that shit every day, Tim. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't need a challenge. I showed it to Chia. We laughed. And she was like, yeah, we should do that. I was like, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. But no. We I don't want to know. Nah. I, I don't want to know because I already know. Even if you don't know. Cause like I know I know parents are so sick of hearing this, but right. closest thing I got is my dogs. Okay, <laughs> it's not that it's not that close, but it's it's close enough for me. Mm-hmm. I feel like between my dad and my brother, I don't want to know. Mm. I don't want to know which way they would run because I'm I'm gonna start looking at them weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Every time I play with them, I'm gonna be like, "You'd rather be with my brother." Huh? <laughs> you got older brother, younger brother? I'm the youngest, so I got You're older the youngest. brother, older sister. Let me ask you this. Because I'm an only child, right? Okay. And Chia wants to have a handful of kids. Mm-hmm. What's a handful? She wants like four. Oh, wow. How many do you want? Look, <laughs> I'm an only child. I told Chia, I'm like, I'm cool if you just if we just want to chill with Veda. <laughs> but if you want more, fuck it. Let's have more, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So, but I don't have a sibling experience. Yeah. And I've heard... Negative, and I've heard positive. Mm-hmm. For me, I'm like I loved I, I loved my only child experience. I wasn't the, one of those like lonely only kids. Like I right. I loved my experience growing up. Um, but I don't know how to navigate sibling experience. Right? Yeah. So for you, did you enjoy having siblings, or were you one of those where like y'all hate each other until you were grown? Absolutely liked having siblings. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know that's. I think that. 
having a sibling in the house is it, it works in uh, similar ways to going to public school. It's kind of like a little simulated mm. real life. So it's like you go to public school, you're gonna see or get into you're gonna see a lot of fights. You might get into fights, you know, mm -hmm. girls, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, all of that is basically a simulation of how it is out there, but more controlled. Mm. So I feel like it's kind of the same with 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 uh, having just more people in the house your age. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're gonna you're gonna learn more social skills. You're gonna fight more. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I think that it it really comes down to age gaps because mm. I think once the age gap is too big. That relationship is either just like, that's my little brother, I'm his protector, mm. or it's like, yeah, that's my little brother, I pick on him. You yeah, know? it's not necessarily like a, the homie. a bond. Right, right, right. Yeah, right, right. like my my brother is only a year and a half older than me. Okay. So like I've noticed that a lot of uh, uh, kids that are have no siblings are very creative and very outspoken and very bold because they might have to like entertain the whole party or, or the whole, you know, like yeah. all the adults that are there. But I've also noticed that um, parents, now that I have a lot of friends that have kids, parents that only have one kid is like, they have to be their kid's homie. They have to like always be playing with them and stuff mm. like that. Whereas like my, my parents were there all the time, but like me and my brother were, had adventures and stuff. They just let y'all go. Yeah, you could, you could, basically having two kids, especially of the same uh, age, rage, and gender, They'll be playing, entertaining each other, mm -hmm. and you don't have so much effort or, or, or pressure on you. So from uh -huh. a parenting point of view, I would be like, hell yeah. This yeah, means, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, have them be able to play with each other. But from a, uh, having brothers and sisters, absolutely. All right. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, for sure. Especially you know? if she already wants four, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I don't know how people do, like, you know, I just talked to somebody who had, like, an 11-year-old, a 20-year-old, a 29-year-old. Right. 18, you know what I mean? That's really spaced out. Yeah. And that overlaps to the point where it's like, you got to redo the toddler oh, thing. God. You got to redo the teenage thing. Yeah. As opposed I'll, to dealing with it all at once. I'm glad Chia <laughs> wants to just like bust them all out because like, <laughs> I mean, not going to lie, a part of me is like, damn, this is just started getting really fun and now you want to do the babysit all over again. But then, you know, I, I, I look at the future and there will be that time when like, let's say everyone's finally like, I don't know, three, four, five, six, seven and we can actually Go on a vacation. Go somewhere. Because, mm -hmm. dog, I was supposed to go to Tokyo right before the pandemic hit. And I was so hyped. I'm like, I'm going to Japan. It's been on my list. We're going. Mm -hmm. And then fucking pandemic happened. I couldn't do it. So we're like, fuck it. Let's start having kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but now, I'm not going to be able to go to Tokyo for like so long. Really? You know? What I if mean, it's like a group thing? A group thing, but at the same time, like traveling with, with babies is a bitch. Uh, so I gotta wait until they at least all know how to like wipe their own asses. You uh, know what I'm saying? Man, and right. it's like, uh, and I'd like for them to kind of have be old enough to really t take on the full like, hey, this is a, a thing I'm remembering. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So that's gonna be like, right. I don't know, four, five. Why and not then, just leave your family. I'm There's also that. <laughs> There's also that. Why not go on the run? <laughs> Look, let, give me a reason. Super uh, Nintendo World. Oh, that's where I'm going next year. Man, I was, when you first said it, I was like, "Oh, it's, th that's perfect that you didn't go then because now Super Nintendo World is is happening." But that too. That just opened. Yeah, but it's coming out here, so you're good. Oh, all right. You know what I would like to? Okay, now this is kind of like. What's the weirdest thing you've, you've eaten before I get into this? Because I'm about to... <laughs> Speaking of which, I brought oh, a, you a brought charcuterie snacks. board. You brought a charcuterie board! It's one of those ghetto ones, but it's still... I like I, those. I, I love a good charcuterie board, dog. After the land, sea, and air, I feel like my, my stomach needs something more <laughs> sophisticated. <laughs> yep, I got one in there. Hell yeah. I kind of stole hers, though. <laughs> it's the same one she used. Amazing. Oh, also, uh, sea salt and vinegar chips. Probably my, the best. My fucking guy. Yeah, that's your shit? Salt and vinegar chips are literally my favorite flavor of chips. Hell yes! Do you do Lay's or Kettle? Because those are my top two. I'm a Lay's man. Okay. Both very, very good. I got Lay's at the crib. Oh, I have an empty bag at the crib. <laughs> so what would you say is your weirdest thing you've ever eaten? <sighs> I've eaten alligator jerky before. Mm. Terrible. Mm. Um, for a long time, swordfish was the the mm. wor the weirdest thing. But I, I, as I grew up, I feel like that's more normal. Like a swordfish steak. You gotta have some alligator that's not jerky, that's straight up alligator, like grilled in a thing. Because that's just... You great. like it? Yeah. Have you I, had it? I was invited to a mukbang. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on her name. It's an influencer who's really, really popular for mukbangs. Mm. And what she does, she does a barbecued gator with the face still on it, mm -hmm. and the rest is wrapped in bacon. Mm. You've ever seen those? Mm -mm. The face still on it is kind of <laughs> crazy. <laughs> well, bro, crazy thing about gator is the different body parts taste like different meat. The tail tastes like steak to me. Okay. Like beef. And then the arms areas taste chickeny to me. And then like wings. Really? Yeah. And then the rest of it has kind of a weird fish steak. Like you're like, is this fish? Is this? I'm not sure what this is. And that's the saying? body? Yeah. Yeah. Arms chicken. Arms chicken. Tail, tail steak. Tail beefish. Yeah. And then the body's kind of body like. Body fishy. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. It's, it's, it's like a land, air, and sea. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, just, that just sounded written. That was great. <laughs> that was fantastic. I, I ask you all that to say uh, there's a place in Japan that my homies stumbled onto. Okay. They didn't even know this is what it was when they went in. They just thought, they just said it smelled good, so they went in. And as they're looking at the walls, they're like, wow, this beef they're cooking up looks funny like the 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 layout of what they have on the on the walls is weird and then they realized oh this isn't beef this is horse meat and yeah <laughs> and i think you can get it cooked and you can get it as like sashimi like a fucking like like a Raw horse? like a tartar like oh no horse situation you like, you like beef tartar um, I, I fuck with some tartare if it's yeah if it's on the menu yeah that's uh i, I was actually at a place yesterday that had that on the menu and that's the thing where the dude in the tuxedo comes and grinds it out and it looks like raw meat, right? Tartar is raw, yeah. Mm -mm. Can't do it? No. Sashimi, I, I, I feel like it's been around long enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know enough about tartar. And just because you got a tuxedo on doesn't mean it's high end. So speaking of, here's what's interesting about raw beef, right? Um, you think about consuming raw beef. Oh. Uh, you got it. <laughs> when you think about consuming raw beef, right, you think tartare, you think bougie shit, right? But my wife, who's half Eritrean. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, she is half Eritrean. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um she her her dad and her aunt put me on to you had injera? Which one is that? Injera is like uh, Eritrean, Ethiopian, like East African shit where they like, they lay out, injera is like the flat bread. It's oh, kind of squishy spongy, bread. Yep. squishy bread, okay. yeah. And What's it called again? Injera. Injera. And then they'll scoop all the like vegetables and meat and stuff in the middle, Delicious. right? Delicious. So bomb, right? So one thing they'll do is this thing called a uh, kitfu, right? Where it, let me see if it's kit, kitfu or kitfo. Let me make sure I'm saying that right. Where it's ground raw beef. Okay. And they'll eat it the same way with the injera. Kid fo. Kid fo. And it's raw beef, seasoned, and I don't know how they prepare it, but it's good to consume. And you've had it. And I've had it. I liked it. Well, well was it like that mushy ground it's mu beef? It, it's mushy, yeah. Okay. It's like raw beef, you know? It's ground, it's ground raw beef. So how would you describe it to someone who <sighs> has... That's not even like in their culture at all. I mean, it's mushy, <laughs> and it's but you know I think it's it gets good when if you can enjoy the, like the beefy kind of fattiness with like the spices and the injera together. Okay. Um, you know I like I can't eat a lot of it. You feel me? Um, like I went at one time I was at a um like a funeral. And, or not a funeral, but like it was like kind of the, the funeral food. The well, it was like you know how sometimes for funerals they'll prepare special things because like all the families there, blah right. blah blah. So I was at this like family thing before a funeral, and once the aunties heard that I liked the kitfo, they scooped so much onto my plate, and I'm like, uh oh. I'm like, oh my God, I can't eat all this. I felt so bad because I kind of like, I had like some of it and then I kind of had just like, you know, when you just turn the plate over and put it in the jazz can, I felt so Man. bad. Top five most awkward moments yeah. is somebody watching you, expecting you to eat something. Oh my God. I just had to try and sneak away and like, just it's like, 
Because uh, yeah. it's so offensive to not eat somebody's food, but it's I also am. like if you don't like it, you can't put that, keep putting it into your body. So it's like the one thing you can't fake. <laughs> In my head, I'm like, I fuck with this raw beef, but I'm not gonna, I'm not about to eat a whole plate of raw beef. You know right. what I'm saying? So, so that was what it, the, when you said they were scooping, it was just straight up the raw beef, and all you were doing would be sponging it. Yeah. Even here. if that was cooked beef, I feel like you shouldn't just be eating that much. It's a lot. <laughs> meat. Here, here, look. Oh, let me show you. Oh, here's a good picture. So you see, you got they got the raw beef, and then they got the shit. Like they got other like spices and seasonings. Oh, so they seasoned the hell out of it. Oh, it's super seasoned. I was still picturing the Ralph's pink. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so seasoned. I probably ate this <laughs> and didn't even know. I went. I went. The only um, Eritrean restaurant I've ever been to. It was in Little Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know. I just pointed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes people know where they're at, but I don't know that stuff. Um, but I went on a date in Little Ethiopia years mm. ago, and I was just getting plates of those of those things, and and I guess the whole platter is on that bread, right? Mm-hmm. And there was vegetarian ones, but there was a couple of meat ones, but they just they're so seasoned. Mm. I assumed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think to ask, like, is this cooked? Mm. <laughs> you know, but it, that I mean, why did would look you? like, right. Yeah. But um, I know that nothing was disgusting. So if I did eat it, I liked Everything's it. Everything's fire, bro. Like, oh, there's also a restaurant out here called Lali Bella's, uh, uh, an Ethiopian spot where they do a kitfu, kitfo, kitfo sandwich. And it's like the raw beef, but just in bread. <laughs> so it probably tastes like a pulled pork sandwich because of that mushiness. Similar, yeah, or yeah, like yeah. Like a manwich. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, that's not, yeah, that's accurate. I think so. I'm actually an as- aspiring, I'm, I've always been a foodie, but I've, I'm like an aspiring on-camera foodie. Okay. Um, you know, I told you I had the, the food podcast. Yes. It never came out. And I have a couple food shows uh, on All Def. I, what, how much do you travel to eat? As opposed to just trying things locally. Because it seems like you actually go to like other countries and stuff. I mean, you mean for content or for life? Both. I I have a folder of like screenshotted places all over that I want to try. Um, you know, when me and David were doing Send Foods and we sold it to Thrillist, it was a blessing to be able to take it all over the country. You know what I'm right. saying? How, I, how many places do you guys go? Man, we probably went to damn near... Any state that had a food festival, okay. we, we were there, you know? How many episodes? Was it a couple seasons? Shit, yeah, a couple seasons. Nice. We, we were shooting that show for two, maybe almost three years. That's the dream. Oh, it was totally the dream, you know? Fire. And it was initially why I fucking started doing that. I, I did that shit out of my pocket just shooting in LA and San Diego. Until, you only did two episodes before you sold it? Um, it we did like a handful of episodes. Uh, anything that was in LA, Long Beach, San Diego, any food festival I could find that was in driving range, mm-hmm. we would go. And then when it got acquired and then we were taking it everywhere, it was like, oh, this is great. Because we were like getting paid to eat, get drunk, and, you know, we're getting money on top of it. Right. Um, so I think the farthest we went was like Hawaii, you know what I'm saying, which was beautiful. And I was trying to do like a, a Toronto festival, but for whatever reason, they couldn't, you know, they didn't have it. I don't know. We couldn't go to Canada for whatever reason, yeah. right? But – um. Yeah, I got a I got a bunch of restaurants in my like folder. Like I want to eat here. Mm-hmm. Um, it gets a little tricky when you know you're paying for your own content. You can't right. really travel as much. Right, right, right. But you know, you can write it off. You can write it off. <laughs> yeah. You can write it off. I'm tr- you know, hey, like I, I I might start you know using like my little random Hello Fresh brand deals to be like, let me just use this to pay for a trip to fucking right. wherever. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. right. <laughs> so I'm figuring it out. Um. But man, the food space is kind of crazy. It opened up a lot of doors for me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Once I pivoted from only making dick jokes to making dick jokes and talking about food, <laughs> <laughs> opened up a lot of doors, you know? <laughs> it's so cool how positioning works, you know? Mm-hmm. All you got to do is just like, be like, I'm in this sector now. And now yeah. it's just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Because even like, look, even like, even trying to find people for, for to fill in today, right? Yeah. I was scrolling through my timeline and I'm like. First of all, I'm trying to find guests for No Chaser. Or I'm just trying to find anybody who I think might be interesting. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, but for this, I'm like, who's funny? But also, 
I can talk to about food. Right, <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's not a lot of people. Yeah, that's so weird. Yeah, we we're talking about how some people just don't really fuck with food like that. Yeah, some people <laughs> like, yeah, well, cool. Yeah, it's food. Food is food. Like, yeah. what do you mean? <laughs> food is everything. No, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a, a aspiring foodie too. So I think that the 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 box I need to get out of was one that you mentioned earlier, which is like when you said. Have you ever ventured into the other parts of the food truck, like lingua and stuff like that? It's like, no, I'm very comfortable mm. in this area, but I just want to experience that everywhere. Mm. But at some point, I gotta, you gotta do it. I gotta get out of there. That's why I was. <laughs> I mean, that's why I was good for me because you know, I'm, I'm. I used to even before I started doing the food shit, I like to go to restaurants and if they had weird shit on the menu, I'd be like, give me your weirdest shit. You know what I'm saying? Quote unquote weird. So you don't have like a mental block in terms of what you're eating. No. Because for me, I like, part of it is also like, I like to be able to brag and say, yeah, I ate this and you couldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm, so then, by that, that means there is some type of struggle in you eating it. I mean, yeah. Like, I wouldn't say it's a struggle, but I think it's an understanding that it is a struggle for some people. Ah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So there's really no, like, ill, this is this thing, or like, this is a tongue, or this is a a thing like when, when it gets to like I don't know testicles and stuff yeah there's a little apprehension there dick stuff yeah for dick, sure dicks and, dicks and balls and, it's and like, it semen in the yeah air. like this was a dick <laughs> you know <laughs> this used to be a dick I mean it still is a dick it's just it's chopped it's and, just and, and pureed yeah exactly <laughs> it's just seasoned so yeah it's just a seasoned dick you know <laughs> most so, dicks are not seasoned exactly <laughs> exactly and I'm married now so mine isn't and seasoned anymore but like <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's always a little apprehension for the for that type of shit. Yeah. But but nah, for everything else, like weird body parts and stuff, not really. Interesting. You know? Even weird animals, all that stuff. Nah, I like like I said, man, I feel like if I can eat weirder animals, uh huh. Yeah. Uh, here here was my theory, right? Here's here was my old theory I always used to say. If everyone's eating like you said, the basic three or four, mm -hmm. chicken, fish, beef, pork, I feel like we're all getting the life energy from those animals, right? Mm. So if I'm getting a weirder, different energy from these different animals <laughs> that <laughs> other people aren't eating, I'm becoming a more powerful <laughs> So you're saying person. that you're in a room full of people with chicken energy. Yes. <laughs> and in my, but you got quail. In, in my veins, I got quail and frog <laughs> got, and fucking. You got puffer fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, puffer fish. People are like, there's something about this guy. I don't, I can't, I can't put my finger and on it. And someone walks in, he's like, this man got that puffer fish energy. <laughs> How do you know? Because I also ate a puffer <laughs> yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy's like, I'm, I'm about to die. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's that's no, that's awesome. I I wish I had that. Well, I here, definitely wish I had that. Well, I feel like baby steps. Next time you go to taco truck, try either the lengua or the cabeza is fired. That's too. face, right? It's like right here of the cow. It's like who thought it, to eat that? It's the cow's. <laughs> it's the cow's oily T zone. You know what I'm saying? Forehead wow. and right here. And he's eating nose bridge, but it's so tender. Is it? It's bomb. Forehead? Yes. I will never look at a cow the same in the face. Because <laughs> I never, I always thought like, all right, milk and the meat is somewhere in this part. Yeah. But they're eating the cow face. Yeah, bro. That's wild. I have a funny story real quick before we close it out. When I was with my ex, who's who was Mexican and Spanish, um, I saw, I had a flyer for a new taco truck. And it Why? Had, um, Were you on the street team? Uh, someone had given me a flyer. Okay, as a consumer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I wasn't passing them <laughs> out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's why you're a foodie. <laughs> <laughs> so it had all the Spanish Whoa. versions. Oh, you got the, the super cracker. The non -per perforated. <laughs> <laughs> cool. and one of the ingredients was uh, labios, which what was is that? lips. So it's cow what lips? It's lip tacos. Shut up. Cow they eating the lips? Apparently, right? They just putting everything in the tacos. So yeah, I know. <laughs> what and also there's a spot down uh downtown at the um lips. at the central Grand Central Market where they serve all type dog like every bit of the fucking animals you can think of, they're serving in tacos. Um What's it's called the it's called Morelia tacos or some shit. It's probably like, you know, lips and ears and snouts and tails. Ear and tacos? All types of shit. So anyways, That's I text wild. I texted my girl at the time, I'm like, yo, what does labios mean? And she's like, lips, period. Why? <laughs> Who's asking? I was like, it's a taco truck. It's a taco truck. <laughs> she thought she was getting hit on by a Latina? Yes. She was like, oh, LOL. All right, cool. <laughs> My first thought would have been labia. Labias. L lips. Are you sure? 
They no, met no, lips? No, they did. But, like, I never made that correlation until right now. You might have ate pussy, pussy taco. Cow yeah. pussy lips. <laughs> Wow. You made a, a, a cow pussy taco. Damn. Bomb. All right, y'all. What's it? Thank you for watching another episode of Dudes Behind the Foods. Shout out to my guy, Patrick Cloud, for pulling up, filling hey. in for David So, man. Bow, bow, bow. Uh, I appreciate you so much, man. And thank Thanks you for trying to wear shit with me today. This was great. It was. It actually genuinely was. Yo, Check you, that off the list. Do it. You got, y'all got. you should do it and let me know. Tag me if you do it. Um, thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, all that bullshit. And uh, see you next time. Maybe David will be back. Maybe not. You Bye. <laughs> Behind the food Yo, man, I like to use DoorDash because I just don't want to go outside, okay? Download the DoorDash app and enter code DUDES. That's a 50% half off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code DUDES. One more time, don't forget that's code DUDES for 50% off up to a $20 value and zero dollar delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Who doesn't love getting new undies for the holidays? Nobody that's who me undies. Undies, my friends, is what we are sponsored by, and it is your go-to spot for snuggly, soft undies and more that all your loved ones will adore. To get 20% off your first order, go and free shipping and 100% satisfaction guaranteed, go to meundies.com slash dudes. That's meundies.com slash dudes.